It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up live from the greatest city in the world and the city of brotherly love. This is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with Chief Investment Officer, my father, the man with the plan, Big Bob Payne. So what do we got on tap today, sir? Well, I saw a crazy study from House.com that just came in, Bob, and they recently ranked the best and worst cities to make money on your Airbnb. So they just looked at basically how many days you need to rent your place before you can cover your monthly mortgage. And it went from city to city. And if you had a guess right now, what's the most lucrative city to have an Airbnb operation? Well, since uh, we booked a, an Airbnb in Santa Barbara, I'm going to say Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara, which I don't even know if it's even there anymore after all the, the mudslides and everything else. You got out of Dodge just in time, didn't we? Just, just in time. Uh, believe it or not, it's not a place that you would guess. It's not a one of these hot spots or destination places. It's actually Akron, Ohio. came oh. in as the top place that if you rented your place for over four days, you'd cover your mortgage for the whole month. So who would have thought? I mean, I mean, Akron's definitely on the top of my list of destination places in America to visit. Well, I have a few friends that uh, live there, and they said it's a great place to be from. <laughs> I guess that's about <laughs> it. On the other side of the equation, San Jose, which is tech-saturated, oh. takes you almost 28 days to cover your mortgage bill. And I think that's just because the houses out there are just so expensive that you really can't make it up. So you have to rent your house for the whole month just to cover that monthly nut. So That's stay pretty tough to rent your house out. Where do you live? On the beach? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, so Akron, Ohio it is. Let's book our flights. <laughs> Let's book our flights. We're going. Well, we've got a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about just like it's important to get your annual physical every year. Maintaining your personal health is just as important as maintaining your physical health. Bob and I are going to discuss the similarities between maintaining your physical well-being and your financial. We're going to talk about financial jargon. People in the financial world love to make themselves sound smart by using a lot of fancy mumbo jumbo. Well, Bob and I are going to break down what they're really saying and show you how simple it really is. Along with this week's financial pornography, there's a lot of stuff out there in the media this week that you need to avoid at all costs. And we have our spotlight segment where we're going to dissect a real financial plan. We have our star financial advisor on the show this morning, Frankie Lagrateria. So it's going to be a great show. Let's get right into it. Let's talk, Bob, about your financial health. So, Bob, I'm curious. How often do you actually get a physical? Right. I can't believe you're asking me that question, knowing your mom. It's booked every year for the next 300 years. <laughs> so you're already booked for a couple years in advance on your physical. That's that's pretty impressive. I go the same day every year with the same doctor for the last 30 years, and it's the smartest thing you can do. Yeah, exactly. Which makes me feel like I need to book my physical because I'm at least a year and a half since I had my last one. I'm going to make sure, Rye, that mom doesn't hear this call because <laughs> she's going to be very unhappy with you. I'm going to get a lot of calls on that cell phone over and over again until I get that physical. But what we, you know, have to remember, Rye, there's only there's in life. Whether it comes to finance, comes to money, it comes to your health, you only have one life and you've got to take really good care of it. If you don't take care of it, you're not going to have a great life. Yeah. And the same thing can be applied to your finances. What amazes me, Bob, is a lot of times you'll go to a financial advisor. I'll put that in quotes because there's hmm. a lot of people out there that put themselves out as financial advisors. And maybe if you're lucky, they'll run some financial or retirement projections in that first meeting and then they'll invest the money and then they'll never do it again. And you know, one thing we always talk about is it's so critical that your financial plan is a working document. Yeah, it's so important. It's, it's A to B, right? It's getting from point A to point B. I go to the doctor every year to get my full physical because I want to be healthy. I want to enjoy that journey, right? It's, it's not about anything more than enjoying the journey. And uh, you know, if you have a choice, be healthy or not healthy, what, what are you going to choose, right? It's just common sense. Yeah, it's monitoring your financial health the same way. And I mean, let's face it, your life is going to change a lot. Where you were 10 years ago is a lot different than where you are today. And 10 years from now, your situation is going to be a lot different. And you know, one thing we talk about just from a financial perspective is the way you invest your portfolio. 
Now you're 10 years older than you were 10 years ago. And a lot of times you still have that same aggressive portfolio in place. And now you might be close to retirement or you might be in retirement and you just can't afford to do the same things. And I always go back, Bob, to 2008. You know, how many of us got hammered in the markets because we're really aggressive? Yeah. So, Rai, why wouldn't you go to the doctor? Why would you wait a year and a half? Why would I wait a year and a half? Because I'm lazy. Yeah. That's probably number one. Number two, you just don't want to deal with, you know, what if something's wrong? That's the thing I always get paranoid about. Okay. So there's two things, right? There's procrastination and that can really be harmful to your health. Right. And then there's fear, right? And, you know, your grandmother would never go to the doctor because she was afraid they would find out she was sick. Yeah. That's pretty heavy, Bob. And she was yeah, sick. Is heavy because she found out because she was sick and she ended up dying at 56 and deprived us of, of being with her for, you know, all those great years. So it's, you know, it's that fear that can prevent you, you know, from sitting down and doing a financial plan because you might find out that you're not doing everything you need to do. And so there's fear and procrastination and both of those things you have to address. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, it's more therapeutic to know than not to know. Um, yes. So just getting in there and getting the process started. And then on top of that, once you put your plan in place, that active working document of revisiting things on an annual basis at the very least. And I think about it, Bob, just from the standpoint of how important it is to be proactive, not reactive in your investment strategies and your financial planning. You know, it's so simple to make financial decisions, right? When you have a goal in mind, right? So, you know, why, why are we funding this education for your children? Well, because they have to pay tuition when they reach 18. You know, it's not like you have to, you can put them in the dorm room and they go, oh yeah, you know, you can send a check a couple of years from now. You got to yeah. pay the check when they, you know, when they, when they show up on campus, you know, when you retire, right, you want to start drawing on that portfolio. You got to fill that income gap. Planning is so critical. It's like an annual physical with your doctor. You need to have an annual financial review. It's sometimes takes time, right? But you got to make time to make money. Yeah. And it just makes your life so much easier. So if you're thinking to yourself right now, you know, I haven't had a physical, financial physical or a physical physical in a very long time, probably the time to do it. And if you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will put together a financial physical for you with our famous total financial master plan. It's a full holistic review where we look at everything. Simply bring in all of your docs. If you have your tax return that was just finished, we'll have our CPA partner review it. Make sure you're not paying unnecessary taxes. Dust off that will in the basement. We'll have our estate planner review that to make sure that your estate plan is up to date and what changes you may want to make. And finally, just stick all those statements in a brown paper bag. We'll make it easy for you. Bring them in. We'll go through all of your financial statements. We're going to build you your own personalized portal where we can look at everything. And we're going to do a full portfolio x-ray. We're going to look at things like income. What is your income gap in retirement? How are you going to replenish the income when you're not working? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden fees in your portfolio that you don't see. A lot of those annuities, insurance products, mutual funds, brokerage products. We're going to show you all the fees in your portfolio and show you how to reduce cost. And we're going to look at diversification. Is your portfolio retirement ready? Do you have the same portfolio you had 10 years ago? What adjustments do you need to make so that your portfolio is prepared when we have another market crash? And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to tie it all together and we're going to determine that age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved over 200000 for retirement, our team will run for you your own total financial master plan, no obligation, no cost, but you got to call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with Rye. We're the pains of no pain, no gain financial radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Officer of Payne Capital Management. And corporate earnings continue to generate the best results we've had in the past 25 years. 
But rather than rally on the back of such upbeat results, the global markets pulled back slightly once again on the week. Now, with 70% of the S&P 500 companies that have reported, 80% have exceeded analyst expectations, and the growth rate for the quarter now stands at a whopping 22% increase. So the big question troubling investors is why is the market shrugging off such impressive results? Well, Wharton economist Jeremy Siegel says the markets are struggling in the face of two big uncertainties or two big headwinds. How much will the Federal Reserve raise rates and the upcoming midterm elections? Others point to highlighted volatility with the number of 1% one day moves already triple that of all of 2017. Firms point to a strengthening dollar, which rose on the week. Remember, a weaker dollar tends to benefit multinational companies and non-U.S. companies, while a stronger dollar has the opposite effect. On top of all this, you have the financial press spewing a laundry list of concerns that harmonized global growth is starting to unwind. We're at peak earnings, trade wars, tariffs. We're in the ninth inning of the economic expansion, as if the markets advance end in the ninth inning like a baseball game. All I can tell you is that all of these concerns are simply that. They're concerns. They're not certainties. And I know no one, and I mean no one, can predict what's unpredictable or know what's unknowable. What I do know is that this period of volatility will pass and that a well-diversified portfolio makes money every single day. See, every day your bonds accrue interest and every day your stocks accrue and earn dividends. They add value to your portfolio, whether the market is up or down. Portfolio returns are about total return, income, and price appreciation. The price moves come in unpredictable spurts, but the income accrues every single day. So the good news is you get paid to wait to grow your wealth. But the only way to win it is you have to be in it. So stay invested, or better yet, put any cash you have to work on the dips, just like Warren Buffett did the entire first quarter of 2018. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, do I have a portfolio built to win? Why sit there and wonder when you could know? Give us a call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Get a clear picture of your finances. I can't see nothing. Got to open my eye. Let's get back to the show. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I, we like to keep it simple. We're simple men, and we want to keep it simple for you, just give you some common sense advice about your planning and investing. And that's why we put together our latest online video course, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Can't Outlive. It's a simple course. You can simply download it if you text the word BUSH to 555-888. That's the word BUSH to 555-888. It just gives you a baseline to start the retirement planning process, makes it easy for you. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. You can get our newest online video course. That's what you need to know about creating an income you can't outlive. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. BULLISH to 555-888. And I also failed to mention, we do have our producer here as well, Mark Haywood. Good morning, Mark. I forgot to uh, introduce you. Always the here in the background. The Always here. The man who makes things work. The smoothest man in North Carolina, making sure that we're, uh, we're up and running every week. So good to see you, Mark. Good to talk to you. Thanks for having me. Hey, he's, man. Guard, he's the guardian angel on our shoulder, right? Keep a good eye on us. Somebody's got to put all those O's in smooth, right, Bob? <laughs> That's right. Not <laughs> Certainly not Bob. Who's the word smooth to define this show? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so let's talk about, when, you know, Bob, I think one of our favorite jokes on Wall Street is it's a lot of ordinary people pretending to do extraordinary things. <laughs> so well which, said, Rye. <laughs> which probably explains why you hear so many people in the financial world using a lot of fancy language that just doesn't make sense to average, normal human beings like us. So, Bob, I thought it'd be fun to decode some of the more egregious financial jargon we often hear, or we hear way too often. And one that you hear all the time is, we've experienced a significant market correction this month. What the heck does that mean? That means that your portfolio lost money, right? That's simple. <laughs> Stock market or bond market went down. That's right. So, correction is a really, really... I guess, kind way of saying that your portfolio has gone down in value. Yeah. Sometimes uh, people forget that the uh, markets are connected to what they invest in, but 
a lot of these brokers and all these salespeople are out there telling you they can avoid all the dips and that's just ridiculous. Yeah. And another one kind of along the same vein is we're forecasting a significant upside potential for this stock. Man, that sounds fancy. Yeah, that sounds fancy, but it also, it's one of the uh, dark secrets of Wall Street is that, uh, you know, their capital markets side of their firm is tied to underwriting securities. And a lot of times when they take a big position or they underwrite the security, they use their stockbrokers, their distribution network to sell the stock. So basically when you hear that, you probably have a firm that's taken a huge position in the stock or underwrited the stock, you know, for Wall Street. And the stockbroker has a quota that they need to sell to be a big member of the team. Yeah, I think that's something that's important too when you're when you're working with a financial professional or you're shopping for a financial professional. We have an old joke is you have to watch out what the yield to broker is. And especially nowadays where a lot of disclosures have to be done, I think it's very important to ask your financial advisor or your potential one, how do they get paid? You know, when you come in to see us and we look over your portfolio, you know, since we've been doing this for four decades, we can tell the life of the advisor that you're working with in terms of how they give advice. You can see the period where they were pushing, you know, high cost products that the firm was pushing or where they were doing more of a managed approach or, or they're using, you know, separate managed accounts or they're using mutual funds or they're using C share price mutual funds. We can actually tell the history of the advice you're getting from the stockbrokers that you worked with just by now, looking at your statement. Now, Bob, I don't want to be a cynic, <laughs> but... <laughs> You know, we see a lot when we do our financial reviews for people, a lot of annuities are sold. And a lot of times, if you look at the commission on those annuities, they're some of the highest out of all the things that you could own in your portfolio. Do you think a lot of that has to do with what the salesman is getting in terms of commission or is that the right thing for people to own? Yeah. I mean, it's uh, let's face it, the commissions drive product. I mean, it, what motivates that stockbroker to get on the phone or that annuity salesman to get on the phone is because they're going to get compensated a lot you know, for a little bit of a effort. So, you know, there's a place in Philadelphia, people advertising that they can, you know, get you all the upside of the market with no downside and there's no fees. Now they're running TV commercials. How could they run television commercials and not be paid for what they're selling? I mean, the, the last I checked, you know, these radio stations and TV stations, you know, they make money through advertising yeah. or through people paying them, you know, to do these different uh, commercials. Well, I think a good rule of thumb is, and we say this a lot, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And you hear a lot of these guaranteed 7% rates and things like that. Are you really getting 7%? The 10-year treasury right now is at 3%. There's probably a catch. And a lot of these annuities that are sold specifically, you're not getting a real 7%. And you know, you got to break down the math, but it comes out to be a lot less than that. Well, you know, Ryan, I think that's a great point. And if it's important for you to understand that when you have an investment that yields a certain percentage, you're basically lending money to that institution or person, right? So if you can go to the bank right now and you can borrow on a mortgage at four and a half percent, and then someone comes to you and says, oh, well, we're going to give you 11% on this junk bond or 11% on this bond or this investment or this annuity. You got to wonder, why do they have to borrow at 11% when you are not an institution, right? You're an individual, a normal, average, normal human being like you and I, and you can borrow at four and a half percent. Why do they have to borrow at eleven? If they have to borrow at eleven, it means they can't borrow at four and a half. Nobody's willing to give them the money. So that's a good way to ascertain how much risk you're taking, or the person wants you to take when they give you an investment with a high rate of return that's guaranteed. Supposedly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't assume if it, if it sounds really good, it's that good. And there's usually, you know, looking behind the curtain is usually very very valuable. Another great financial jargon that I found, some more financial jargon that I found from Wall Street is, your portfolio has a very high alpha. I am worried about your potential for reverse dollar cost averaging once you have started to take your RMDs. <laughs> that <is> just <laughs> sounds like when the man across the table from you in the room just wants to sound smarter than you are. <laughs> yeah, I can it, speak it into worse that than one. That if you ask me, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sounds like, listen, I know more than you do. I'm going to pat you on the head and just tell you that uh, I'm going to take really good care of you. I'm just going to manage all your money. And by the way, this is really going to help me make my Tesla lease payment this month. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Ben Stein in uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, just sitting there, just waxing poetic while the class is just <laughs> totally over their heads. Yeah. And I think that's another thing is when you're evaluating a strategy is it should be intuitive and it should be common sense. If you can't understand it as a layman, don't do it. 
we find that a lot when you come in with a portfolio that has a lot of some of these sophisticated products. Like I get that a lot with annuities, not to pick on annuities today, but we'll say, I bought this thing, but I can't remember how it worked. That's a red flag. If you can't understand in plain English how something works, don't walk, run away from that investment or have it analyzed. We have a lot of women clients and we've had a lot of women over the years. They're very smart people. They're great investors and almost to the one. They said the thing they resented most about Wall Street was a male-dominated industry, and they were very condescending to them, telling them that this is too complex for you to understand. They pat them on the head and say, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. I mean, one oh, of the yeah. reasons why Countless. we're 80% women at paying capital management is for that reason. We don't want people to be talked down to. We want them to be educated to understand how to get from point A to point B. Well, mainly, Bob, because we are, we are simple folk. But hey, simple works. Simple does work. And- if you're sitting here wondering, am I being talked down to? Am I getting the advice that I deserve? Well, what we'd like to offer, if you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for retirement. My son, Rye, and I will run for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but you're going to get a full holistic review. We're going to give you access to our new revolutionary 360 financial portal. If you're one of the next few callers, Here's exactly what you can expect from us. We're going to have our CPA partner, one of the top CPAs in the city, review your most recent tax return. We're going to look at your legal documents, your wills, your trust, your beneficiary forms to be certain that you don't have an estate plan that's simply an IOU to the Internal Revenue Service. Lastly, we want you to take all those investment statements. Now, April just ended. It's hard to believe. You're going to get all your April statements this week. Stick them in a shopping bag. Pick up the phone. Pick up your cell phone. Text us and set an appointment because we're going to give you a full portfolio x-ray. We're going to take all those statements and reduce it down to one simple analysis. And we're going to look at the three core elements of a successful portfolio. Diversification, fees, and income. Yeah, we're going to play Are You Diversified with your portfolio and show you in writing whether you are or not. We're going to look at all the cost of managing your money. You know, you want to get the returns for the risk you're taking. You don't want to pay all your return to institutions or to taxes. And lastly, we all have an income cap. One day we want to retire or we want to stay retired. You want to make sure that you have a dependable income stream to fill that income gap. We're going to put that in writing for you. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one customized plan, which will answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family has now been perfecting for over 40 years. That's correct, folks. For four decades, paying capital management has been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams, with the highest odds of success and the least amount of risk. So don't waste time. Call or text us now at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844 752-6692. Get the full holistic review if you have over 200,000 saved for retirement at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. We have 10 slots. Take advantage of it. Give us a call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Nine two. This is no pain, no gain. Financial radio. It's time for financial pornography of the week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob. What'd you find out there this week in that profane world of financial pornography? Yeah, right. What's so great about this segment every week is you really don't have to look too far to find, you know, negativity in the media. You know, it's just that bad news makes for a better story and stories are what stick with us, you know, not the statistics. But, you know, I found 50 years ago this was happening as well because this marks the month that 50 years ago, a fellow named Ehrlich put out a book called The Population Bomb. Now, it turns out that The Population Bomb was a dud. He believed (laughs) that hundreds of millions of people would be dying from starvation, that England would be gone, and India was doomed 
because there were going to be too many people. And as a result, most Americans would be dying in their 40s by this time. Bob, that sounds like a great movie in the making. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> a great movie. It's great fiction, right? Because, you know, not only did he believe it back then, but they just interviewed him 50 years later and said, you know, you were a little bit wrong. Not only did the world not grow, remember, we had about 3 billion people back then. Now we have over 7 billion, and half of the adults in that 7 billion own cell phones. So not only did he miss out on, you know, seeing the population grow, but he's also missed out on a phenomenal investment opportunity. He should have bought some Apple stock because that thing blew out its earnings this week, right? Yeah. Well, what did he... Uh, so they interviewed him all these years later. Did he <laughs> say that he's just a little late? <laughs> or, hey, just be well, patient. It, My uh, predictions said, well, are you know, to- First of all, it turned out that you know the human mind was able to, to cope with this. Not only our economy is growing, but they're doubling every 18 years. The world has been richer every single year measured by GDP since you wrote the book. And he said, yeah, yeah, I see all that. But he said, the collapse of civilization is a near certainty now in the next few decades. <laughs> oh. Well, just keep pushing your prediction out. I guess that's the only strategy to use. So Just keep uh, digging that hole, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, the, the best news was there was another fellow named uh, Julian Simon who wrote a book at the same time, which was you know the ultimate resource is what he called it. And really what it was about was about the human mind and how the human mind is able to take any problem and solve it and that human beings are just, you know, they come with minds and that, you know, they're able to expand the number of the seats at the table. And so he worked where Mr. Ehrlich was working from a perspective of scarcity. Mr. Simon works from a perspective of abundance. And guess who's been right? Yeah. Mr. Simon has uh, had a much better track record. And that's kind of funny, too. I, I find this when I speak with a lot of my my business owner clients, you ask them how their business is going and they're going to say, it's going great. You know, we're, we're really optimistic. Business is growing. It's going to be a great year. And you ask the same person, <laughs> what do you think about the economy? Oh, I don't know about the economy. I'm, I'm a little nervous about it. And the funny thing is, as businesses, we're driving the economy and it's hard sometimes to correlate the overall economy with how you're doing personally. And, and those things are tied together. And right now is a perfect example. I mean, the economy's rocking, but I still hear all this doom and gloom out there, especially in the world of financial pornography. Well, I think about it. Think about how dangerous this type of financial pornography is. I mean, somebody in China believed what Mr. Ehrlich was writing. I mean, look how they you know, forced abortions in China. They forced families to only have one child which was absolutely the wrong decision. Wow. Yeah, it's depressing. <laughs> it, is. it is. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. So, you know, you always have to believe, you know, one of the reasons why I've always been an optimist and I've always been bullish on the financial markets is because it's about human beings and human beings will always do what they have to do to better their situation. And it's only been right here in our country since 1776. Yeah, exactly right. Well, another article I found this week in the vein of financial pornography is investors continue buying bonds as the most hated bull market is still a thing. And this yeah, is pretty wild. Those so stocks, the, man. It's uh, you know, it's, it's only been going straight up for nine years. <laughs> yeah. The problem here is so investors pulled nearly eleven billion out of U.S. equity funds in the first quarter, and they put uh, you know over nine billion into taxable bond mutual funds. And, you know, Bob and I, we talk about this all the time. Bond funds are a very risky investment. So, you know, it's a very bad decision to take money out of stocks, which are fairly valued here, and putting money into an investment that's high risk right now. Because if interest rates go up, your bond funds go down, Bob. Yeah, but right. If you own the individual bond, you eliminate that problem. Why do people continue to buy open ended bond funds? They're bad, they're dangerous, they don't work. And history, it shows their track records are awful. Yeah, and I think that's right now one of the more critical things you've got to look at in your portfolio. And I talked about this a little bit the other night on our conference call is the dynamics have changed. You know, the, mm. the portfolio of the last 10 years is not going to work the next 10 years. In the last 10 years, you had deflation, interest rates yep. are going down, you may have refinanced your mortgage, and the global economies were not growing. It was just the US was the only game in town. Now, Bob, you have the exact opposite. Inflation's going up. The 10 year treasury hit 3% recently. Mm-hmm. And the global markets, in a lot of cases, are not only growing, but faster than the U.S. So true, Ryan. It's not only that. It's just that it's always knowing the bonds that you own. I mean, when I see Puerto Rico default or I see the problems you're having in Illinois or I see a junk bond company go under, you know, you'll know what's in that bond fund. You have no idea, you know, what type of risk they're taking because you can't see the individual bonds. Even if you read the prospectus, it doesn't tell you. So, yeah. you know, you want control over the quality of your bonds because, you know what, the biggest 
reason to own a bond is, Ryan? I know you're going to say on this one, it's uh, you're not looking for return on the, on the money, you're looking for return of your money. Yeah, what a great concept. You want your money back. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you're going to take risk, put it in the markets. But if you're going to yeah. be, if you're going to have safe money in your portfolio, bond funds are not the place to be. And now with inflation kicking in, which is real, it's happening. You've got to yep. reposition your portfolio. So when I see a lot of investors taking money out of equities and buying bond funds right when interest rates are going up, it's probably one of the less common sense decisions you can make. You know, Ryan, it always bothers me when people invest their money based on events, right? It's the only successful strategy is a process driven strategy. And we talked earlier about your health and your wealth. You need a process. And that process is so simple. It's called A to B, right? Get from point A where you are now financially to point B, your goals and your dreams, and do it with the least amount of risk, do it with the most certainty that a professional can provide. It's called common sense. Bob, I love simplicity. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need a simple game plan. I need a plan that's going to protect me against inflation. It's going to be globally diversified for the next 10 years. Here's your shot to do it if you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our famous total financial master plan. It's a full comprehensive review that looks at everything. Bring in your tax return. You probably just got it back from your CPA. We'll have our CPA partner review it. Make sure you're not paying unnecessary taxes. Bring in your will. It might be sitting on the basement collecting dust. We'll have our estate planner review that to make sure your estate plan's up to date, what changes you may want to make, and simply bring in all your statements. Just wait till they come in at the end of the month, print them off. Simple. Put them in a brown paper bag. We'll go through all of them for you. We'll build you your own personalized portal so we can look at everything from a bird's eye view and we'll do a full portfolio x ray that looks at everything from income. Income is so critical in retirement. What's your income gap going to be? You've got to replace your income when you're not working anymore. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in portfolios. There's a lot of hidden costs in those annuities, insurance products, brokerage products, mutual funds. We're going to show you how to reduce cost on your portfolio, and we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio? Do you own bond funds? Do you have inflationary hedges in your portfolio? Are you globally diversified? We're going to show you how to build the portfolio the next 10 years. Then we're going to tie it all together, and we're going to determine that age-old question, are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we've worked on for literally four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for retirement, our team will run for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. For the pains of no pain, no gain, financial radio. Ready for what Bob and Ryan have to say next? All right, everyone. Gird your loins. Let's find out. No pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I try to keep it simple, try to keep it educational at all times, give you that common sense advice you need for retirement and planning. And that's why we put together our latest video course, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Live. It's a simple baseline course to help you get started in the financial planning process. You can simply text the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555 555- 888, you can download the course for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. Simple online course just to get you retirement ready or start the process. What you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about me and Bob, and see what Bob's hair really looks like. It's amazing. You can check us out on the World Wide Web at bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. You can even subscribe to the show there. Uh, Along with that, you can check me out most weeks on Fox Business News, not every week, usually on with Stuart Varney. And if you have questions that you want to ask myself or Bob, you can always email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. And if it's a really good question, 
We'll answer it right here on the show. Hey, Wood, what kind of questions do we get this week that are really good, that they're worthy of being on our show? We have a question here from Red in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Red says, Bob, I never worried too much about the market when I was working, but now that I'm retired, my stomach is in knots every time the Dow has a bad day. Should I just move everything to cash so that I don't worry so much? Man, Red sounds like one of those uh, prognosticators from financial pornography a little bit. That's what he's suffering from. You know, Ra, he's just like that uh, client that we're, you started working with the other day who retired and they joined that over 55 community and she immediately or his wife immediately went out and, and got into zomba lessons and playing golf and tennis and pickleball having a time of her life. He, on the other hand, scared to death to spend a dime. So he sits home all day watching the financial news, you know, and then was calling his advisor every day on every move in the market, especially this year with, you know, 32, 1% moves in, in the market so far. Yeah, um, that is not so a way what is to the live. problem? I mean, what's the problem with doing that? Yeah, I mean, it just that's the whole whole thing. Well, first off, I mean, everything you're doing should be big picture. If you're looking at the market moves every day, that is not a way to spend your retirement. And anything that you do in terms of planning wise, you know, really should be about what the markets are going to do over time, not over not over a month to month period getting in and out of the market. Like we always talk about, Bob, it's about creating cash flow that you mm-hmm. can't outlive. And if you have cash flow coming in, it's irrelevant what the market's doing on a daily basis. Exactly. And that's exactly what Red needs to do is, is have a plan where they understand you know, where they're going to be five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years from now, what the, the cash flow that's coming in, no matter what the market does on a daily basis, in terms of dividends and interest and passive income streams, it's just about education and seeing that in writing. You know, yeah. Once you see it in writing and you see what your financial situation is going to be like, you know, not just today, but for every year for the rest of your life, it really becomes kind of simple and easy you know, to get focused on what's most important in life. Yeah, and then that's the reason not to be in cash because cash earns nothing. If you have a portfolio that's diversified, you're always getting cash flow irrespective if the market's going up or down. Well, so you never want to slow down there, Buster. I'm getting 1.3% in my money market now. <laughs> well, that's, that's probably enough to buy uh, a Starbucks coffee at the end of the year when you add up all the interest. Well, not if inflation goes up. <laughs> and not if it's one of those grande coffees. No, <laughs> that's, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> what are those grande coffees going for now at Starbucks? Oh, it's just gosh. so ridiculous. More than the Folgers that I make in the morning, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> so, I remember that one analysis you did, that if you didn't buy a grande coffee or a muffin every day and put that money into an IRA, you'd be a millionaire by the time you're 65. That's crazy, but you wouldn't yeah. enjoy those fancy beans and water. <laughs> yeah, good, good luck telling my fiance to do that, Bob. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> let's move on, shall we? <laughs> All right, let's move on. Oh, man. All right, we got another good question that comes in from Ian in Westport, Connecticut. Ian says, Ryan, my long-term care policy says it will pay out a maximum of $250,000 during my lifetime. Is that enough coverage? Maybe, right? Who knows? <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't run the numbers, you don't know. I think that's actually a good point there and a critical thing is when you're planning for what you're going to need in retirement. We talk about filling in that income gap. You want to factor in what healthcare costs can potentially cost you as well. Because if you have several million dollars, well, you may not need more than 250000 from an insurance policy because you can self-insure for the other amount. So I think the first thing you need to determine is what can your portfolio withstand in retirement? If you are retired and you do end up having long-term care costs, and it costs like a quarter of a million dollars, can your portfolio A handle that? If not, do you need to get a policy? And if you get a policy, do you need to insure for the whole thing? Or, you know, maybe you can self insure for some of it. Yeah, you know, insurance is something that's a necessary evil. It's never been a great investment, but it's something you have to have to replace income or some need. And you really can't make a comment on insurance unless you have a total financial picture, right? Yeah, that's the thing. It's just, uh, you know, guessing about these things when you can know, why would you guess? And it's simply just running the numbers and putting, you know, I always say, when we're building a financial plan for you, we're going to run worst case scenarios. Let's look at every cost you can possibly have, you know, from fun things to like, hey, let's take that $20,000 a year vacation that we didn't take when we're working to practical things like what's healthcare going to cost me? And Bob, I know you and I just look at some statistics that if you're 65 today, if you're a man, there's a 70% chance you're going to live to 80. If you're a woman, it's like 75%. And if you're a couple, there's a 90% chance that one of you is going to live to 80. And if you're 65 today, there's a 50% chance if you're a couple that one of you 
is going to live to 90. So longevity is another thing you have to factor in to that plan on top of healthcare care cost. Well, and then on top of that, Rod, look at the advances they're making in medical technology. Life expectancy is going up you know, because of all these great discoveries. And, you know, with all the brilliant minds out there working all these various diseases, you know, you can only expect life expectancy to be higher. So, you know, in Ian's case, quarter million dollars may fall short or maybe plenty, but you got to do the analysis. Yeah, it's just not your parents' retirement. There's just so many more things that retirement is just so much more expensive than it used to be. And financial plans today have to factor those things in. And you know what, Rye, when I look at Red and I look at Ian, you know, a scale of one to 10, how organized do you think they are financially? It's not pretty if you don't know some of these numbers, like what you need for long-term care. I'd say they're probably a two or three, Bob, which most of us are, unfortunately. So when they call us after the show and we ask them where they would like to be on a scale of one to 10, what do you think they're going to tell us? Don't we all want to be a 10, Bob? Boy, you know what, Rye? We should. And if you would like to rank a 10 in your financial life, if you'd like to have all of your financial documents and data organized and simplified, all you have to do is be one of our next few callers. If you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, my son Ryan and I will create for you your own customized 360 financial portal. You know what this means? All of your account numbers, passwords, and security questions for every single bank account, brokerage account, insurance policy, credit card, even your mortgage. Just think about virtually everything with a statement and that has online access can be simplified and organized into one simple financial portal. Wouldn't it be amazing to be financially organized? If something happened to you. Think about how easy it will be for your children or for your spouse to keep your life working or transition your financial affairs in a worst case scenario. If you're one of the next few callers, we have a few spots left. This is what we're going to do for you. We're going to create your own 360 financial portal where not only can you view your net worth whenever you feel like looking, but you'll also be able to track your progress to the most important goals in your life. At the end of the day, we're going to answer that age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family has been perfecting now for over four decades. We want to help you like we've helped many families get from their financial point A to their point B, their goals, their dreams, with their values, with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text us now at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. We still have a couple slots left. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, we'll do the full holistic review. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Get your finances in order now. Give us a call or text, 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I want to educate you, keep you up to date on the most common sense, practical things that you can do to improve your investing, financial planning. And that's why we put together our newest video course. You can check it out online for free. What you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive, simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish. That's B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. 888, get a baseline, get started on the retirement planning process. You can check it out. What you need to know about creating an income you can't outlive, simply text the word bullish to 555 888. That's the word bullish to 555 888. And we have a very, very special, special guest on the show this morning Bob and I's colleague, superstar financial planner, Frankie. La Grotaria. Hello. Wow. What an intro. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it's time for our spotlight segment, Frank, where we actually look at a real retirement plan and we talk about just some of the mistakes that were made with the planning and how you corrected those mistakes. Why don't you give us the rundown on a case that you worked on recently? Yeah, so I actually did something a little bit different. Usually it's a lot of you know retirement plans or getting close to retirement plans, but this one is actually what we call in the wealth accumulation stage, right? Mm. So these are a younger group that we're looking at 
that is starting, you know, to make money, is starting to start to really save, actually, and, you know, not just live paycheck to paycheck, and wants to get into planning, which I thought was a really interesting uh, facet. You know, Frankie, Um, we do this a lot with a lot of our wealthier clients who are well-planned, have been with us for 34 years. We're doing this with their children, their grandchildren. I mean, this is an excellent time to do planning when people have the ability to put money away. Exactly. And you know what I found really interesting, Bob, was how even at that early stage, the planning changes. So this is a new, uh, a newly couple. And so a big thing for them was something about looking into getting their assets joint. You know, is it something that they want to do? You know, how much should they, you know, have together? You know, what are the rules and, you know, tax benefits that they can do together? Things like that, which I found, well, you know, really interesting. And it's funny, too. I mean, you, you look at couples that maybe in their 50s or 60s, and this is a younger couple, you know, a lot of the same things need to be done. There's just so many things you can do from a planning perspective to, like I said, you know, make your life easier later by starting the planning now. So it doesn't matter if you're 30, you're 40, you're 50, or you're in retirement, finally getting a plan in place just makes life so, so much easier. Yeah. And you know, like how many cases we've looked at, Rye, where you have, you know, all your money in large company growth stocks, you have a lot of money, you know, in technology stocks, you're overweighted and your spouse is overweighted. You're overweighted to the overweight. I mean, sometimes the overweight of the overweight can lead to a lot of money return. It could also mean big losses and downturns. Yeah, absolutely. And also, Bob, to your point, you know, when you have all your money in, you know, few baskets, you're missing out on, you know, other baskets that could be doing well. So they have a lot, like you thought, in large growth, large value, the big blue chip stocks. However, they are missing out almost completely internationally. And uh, we were even looking at, Bob, I know we were talking about frontier markets yesterday. They don't have Mm -hmm. anything in frontier markets. Best performing asset class this year. Yeah, they're missing some big growth this year. I bet you they didn't know that, did they? They didn't, which was interesting. It was It's a class that I feel like a lot of people you know, aren't, aren't too familiar with. So Frank, what were some of the issues that you were able to correct? I mean, it sounds like diversification, because we talk a lot about the portfolio of the last 10 years is not going to work the next 10 years, because now we have you know global growth around the world, inflation's kicking in. So what type of things were you able to help on the planning side? Yeah, actually, a big one was not just diversification of their equities, but diversification of their portfolio in general. So they had a huge chunk in cash, cash getting them. I think they had a high yield money market. So 1%, maybe 1.5%. So it, it just wasn't worth it to keep that much money in liquid you know, cash, doing nothing for them. Cash is trash. <laughs> cash is trash, unless you have a plan for it, right? So they're like, yeah, I'm going to use this money in five to six years. In five to six years, you could get some growth on that money, right? It, it amazes me. For sure, yeah, after. especially with inflation coming back. Absolutely. So that was part of it, was really, you know, finite, what is your expenses now? Three to six months is really all you need to have in cash, unless you really feel like you need a year's worth because of, you know, your, your own securities. But three to six months. And then anything beyond a year of expenses, you know, you don't really need to keep that much in cash. You know, if you're looking to buy a house in five to six years, you know, you can do something a little bit more conservative, of course, but Mm -hmm. keeping it all liquid is is not doing you a service. Yeah. No, not at all. Very common right now, and we talk about this a lot on the show, is that between a rock and a hard place, you know, a lot of us, we had 2008 hit, our portfolio went down by 40, 50%. We put a big stockpile in cash. Now it's 10 years later, the market's been straight up, and it's like, what do I do with all this cash? It's too late to get into the market because it's overvalued. I don't want to go into bonds because interest rates are going to go up, and you feel like you can't do anything. And you know, we always say it's not, it's not about an all or nothing approach. And to your point, you know, we talk about diversification. The rest of the world's cheap right now, and there's great dividends to be paid. It's about the cash flow you can create from diversified sources is the key, not sitting in cash earning nothing. Yeah, it's and the same another point you make over and over again, Ra. You're, you're waiting for the market you want as opposed to the market you have. There's always opportunities to make money on the money you have, and uh, you just have to be aware of them. Absolutely. And another point, I, we were wondering, you know, how did he accumulate this much cash? You know, well, why do you have so much cash on hand? And a lot of it was because he wasn't maxing out his contributions. So uh-huh. we ran an analysis for him. We showed him I was like, you know, you don't think it's a big deal to max that out that eighteen thousand five hundred. I was like, but you are losing out on $5 million worth of growth over your lifetime just by maxing out while he's working. You know, sometimes uh, if they're young and they have other expenses, right, and they're 
you know, they want to pay their mortgage, they want to take a vacation, they're, you know, spending a little more than they should. In some cases, you know, a parent can come in and gift money to them to make sure that they're going to make and maximize their 401k. It's just a big benefit that you can give to your children and grandchildren by doing that now, as opposed to waiting until you've left this, you know, God's green earth. Great job on this case, Frankie. Uh, well done. Again, it is about proper diversification and about having that game plan and all the things you can do from a tax standpoint. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need a review like this. I need to get my finances in order. I need to get a plan in place so I can retire comfortably. Here's your shot to do it. We have a couple slots left. If you give us a call right now and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself, Bob, and Frankie Lagrateria, Superstar Financial Advisor, will run for you. Our total financial master plan will do that with no obligation or cost. It's a review just like this. We'll look at everything financially important to your life. We're going to look at you know taxes. If you bring in tax return that probably just came back from your CPA, our CPA partner will review it, make sure you're not paying unnecessary taxes. What tax strategies can you be implementing right now? We'll look at your legal docs. If you have your will, it's sitting down the basement or you don't have a will, we'll have our estate planner review that to make sure that that's up to date, what you need to do from an estate planning perspective. And just bring in all those statements. You know, Put them in a brown paper bag, print them off your computer, make it really easy. Give them all to us and we will download everything into a personalized portal for you and we'll look at everything holistically and we're going to look at all these basic, basic issues you need to look at. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical for retirement. What's your income gap going to be? Are you replenishing the income when you stop working? We're going to show you how to optimize the income on your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. What high cost investments do you have in your portfolio that shouldn't be there? What investments don't you understand? We're going to break it down and help you reduce costs and make your portfolio simpler. And we're going to look at diversification. The portfolio of the last 10 years is not going to be affected the next 10 years. We're going to put together a globally diversified inflation hedged portfolio to make sure that your money outlives you, not you outliving your money using strategies now we've worked on for over 40 years to take you and your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk in the highest odds of success. And if you want to become a financial friend of Frankie, just give us a call or text 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, we have a few slots left, and you saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will create for you your own personal 360 financial portal. Just give us a call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844 844- 752-6692. Wow. Another great show. And I did forget to say, Frankie, that uh, we all want to be financial friends. <laughs> Frankie's financial friends on top of everything else. I mean, it's probably one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself. It's a pretty the cool mul- club. <laughs> <laughs> the multitudes are growing. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of calls coming in. A lot of calls are coming in, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be on that list. <laughs> Well, another great show, Bob. We're glad to have you back in the Northeast. We were missing you. South Jersey feels a lot more safe, a lot better just <laughs> knowing that you're there gracing your presence. Well, Ry, I'm heading out to the uh, Ocean City Boardwalk. I'm headed straight for Manco and Manco Thin Crust Pizza. Best in the world. Ooh. <laughs> I'm jealous. Jealous. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a great weekend, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.